Hello and welcome to this month's market update. I'm joined by KC Lowe, a senior member of our capital markets and asset allocation team. KC, welcome. Yeah. Uh, it continues to be a pretty incredible time for the economy and markets. I guess we've come to that magical time of the year where we draw a line of the end of a financial year and look ahead at another. Given there's been so much that's happened over the last year, I thought it would be good to go and sort of take stock of how that's all ended up. You know, maybe just start with the, you know, what's happened in the economy. Can you give us a bit an update of just, just how it's all unfolded? Yeah, so as you say, it has been an incredible year. Um, it's really been a story of two halves. So, you know, the first half of the financial year, if people can still remember, you know, we've had this ongoing trade tension between the US and China. That was the big theme at that point in time. And during the first half of the financial year, you know, global growth was also growing quite softly uh, as a result of the trade tension. But then, uh, as we know, in January, US and China signed the first, um, the phase one trade deal, which helped a lot. But then um, on came COVID-19, which is the, really the dominating uh, theme for the second half of the financial year. Um, so, you know, with, with the pandemic came also, you know, unprecedented level of fiscal and monetary support that came to support um, the economy. So it's, it's been a wild ride for the financial year. It sure has been. And um, yeah, we've talked about, you know, these issues a lot internally. Um, and so when you look at turning from the economy to financial markets, you said, you know, we had the China trade tensions and, you know, that was weighing on markets. And then we've had COVID and, and more recently quite a big bounce back. So, you know, when you look back at that whole financial year, you know, how is it all washed out across asset classes? So despite all that's happened, um, surprisingly, uh, if you look at developed market uh, shares and in Aussie dollar terms, it's actually finished um, or finished the financial year in the positive. Um, so it's up about 5% over um, the 12 months. Uh, emerging markets were slightly negative at about 1% to 2%. And then Australian share markets been negative, uh, underperforming the others at about minus eight percent but in all it's not such a bad outcome when you think that you know considering we're we're in a pandemic right now um the reserve bank at this month's um uh, meeting did talk about how prices for uh, financial assets have increased substantially despite all this uh uncertainty that's um going on for the economic outlook so that's something to keep watch of uh, in other asset classes, you look at bonds, so Australian and global bond markets. They've also finished the year uh, in positive, uh, providing that downside protection for portfolios. Um, they finished about 4 to 5% in the positive. Um, and then if you look at currencies, the Australian dollar finished the financial year at about 69 cents, so which is about 2% below where it was at the start of the financial year. Wow. And... Um... You know, you, you mentioned some of the, the comments the Reserve Bank's been making this last meeting. You know, if we if we go from looking at the last financial year to, you know, what's really just happening now and, you know, and how things are evolving, you know, as we speak, you know, you know guess what are the things you're looking at or, or thinking about and what's happening now? So on COVID-19, um, the situation is still precarious cases in emerging markets continue to increase at an alarming rate, while in developed market overall, cases do look to be um, more under control now. But having said that, there are some regions where cases are increasing again. So, so US in particular is one. Um, more than 70% of US states um, by population are either pausing their reopening um, or uh, re-entering lockdown now. And then, of course, in Australia, Melbourne's um, reimposed stage three lockdown. So on the COVID front, uh, things are still changing rapidly. On the policy side of things, we see policymakers continue to provide a lot of support. Uh, in the US, the Federal Reserve um, announced in mid-June that 
they, they'll start to buy um, corporate bonds directly from the market now as well to support businesses in terms of providing them with credit. And then in Australia, the federal government's announced the, you know, looking at further income support policies, um, especially post September when the initial rounds of um, support runs out. Um, and then more recently, there's been an announcement by APRA and the banks about uh, providing extension, a four month extension to mortgage holders uh, in terms of deferring their repayments um, on top of the six months already provided. So there's been quite a number of um, uh, support policies that's continuing to be announced. Yeah, great. It's like, certainly is a situation that keeps evolving very rapidly. We uh, a lot to still for us to uh, work through in the, in the months ahead. Um, Thanks very much for your time and, and thanks very much for joining us in this month's market video.